Hey everybody, so we're now at the Pyramid of Kukulkan at Chichen Itza. We're here on the equinox and we're waiting for the sun to move around, so almost in sunset position. So up the side of the pyramid, which you can see there, it turns into a shadow of like a serpent moving down the steps with its head at the base. Now, this is a very interesting site in its own right. It goes back to pre-classic times originally and it was originally a Maya site, then it became uh, an Itza site. There were local kind of tribe were said to maybe have come up from the south or from some other area potentially. And then it became a Toltec site in 987 AD where they moved from Tolan over to this area and kind of covered everything up. So what we're seeing here is like a Toltec design because underneath this there's another pyramid which was built by the Itzas, which you could, once you could go in there, uh, and you can climb the steps, it's very compact in there and it's got like a Jaguar seat on top. And also before that, they think there was an earlier structure going even earlier, which is probably the Maya. Um, and this is much smaller and it was built on top of a sacred cenote. So it's actually built on top of a water kind of a sacred water pool which uh, which surround this whole area they're well known for it here there's a very big cenote just over there where they found all these offerings about 40 skeletons in it as well so it's used for potentially sacrifice uh, ceremony and other things and offerings and the, the offerings they found in there are really interesting actually they are different types of jade they even found tin different conglomerates of metal um, and so it's a real real kind of a mystery as to who was here and who placed them in there so perhaps this may have been a pilgrimage site for multiple different cultures going back to a very early epoch perhaps even the time of the Olmecs most people call it Chichen Itza and that's what I think I actually think that's probably correct uh, as an English version of the pronunciation because it means um, the place of the water or the well of the Itza um, and so this is where the name kind of originally comes from. The pronunciation is a whole different thing, but this is a very important site in the whole Maya world, but it's also it's a, and a Toltec site. So it's not just what you think. It's not just one culture who are involved in the construction of this place. It goes back potentially over 2000 years. The Itza were here during classic Maya times and then the Toltec came around a thousand, or so years ago uh, when they moved over from Tolan. We have the Great Pyramid of Kukulkan and the whole site is dedicated to Kukulkan or Quetzalcoatl. So we're here and we're looking for megalithic aspects but we're also here because it's the equinox, the spring equinox, March 23rd or a couple of days afterwards because it's been closed because of coronavirus. But we're going to show you what we can and we'll hopefully see the shadow effect on the pyramid. So let's get in now and have a look at the incredible bull court which is here at Chichen Itza. Anyway, the pyramid is behind us. You can see that there. We're just walking away from that. We're going to wait until the shadow effect happens. Hopefully we'll be able to see that today. And we're just going over to the bull court uh, because this is one of several bull courts here. Uh, some of them are huge. This one here is absolutely massive. The other ones are more standard size. They're not huge. But uh, this one seems more ceremonial, like it may have been built as a temple in honor of the ball players or in honor of the ancient gods because even in the Chilan Balan which is one of the oldest books of the Maya which was still being read when the Spanish arrived they talk about this sort of ball game with a rubber ball between the gods and heads being cut off and other such things which became part of the ball game so even though the ball game may have originated in Olmec land but anyway we're walking into that point part now I'll just show you some footage of it as we walk in this just shows you the first structure here and you can actually see if we go around these steps here we have a serpent actually going up just to zoom out a bit so we actually have a serpent actually carved into these parts of the steps you can see the see the plumes all along the side there so all the way down here we have the first elements of the serpent which we find all over the bull court the bull court is just over here so we're just walking into the bull court now and you can see one of the plume serpent heads much like we find on the side of the pyramid of Kulkukan. And you can see the size of it just by coming across here. Wow, look, you can actually see the length of the serpent going along the length of the bull court and it would have gone all the way down to the end. You can see the hoop above it over there. So here we have the head of the serpent. This is where it begins on one side of the bull court and it goes all the way along here. All along and all below it you see all these reliefs 
of different battles there's jaguar priests but look at all the i'm just interested in the serpent symbolism here because look at all this all the way along here we have these plumes and so it was so strong here much stronger than we find at many other maya sites and this could have been the itza influence but also the toltec influence because even their king who he was supposed to have come over here was kulku khan or quetzalcoatl that was his name a good view of the ring there that is quite impressive but down here we have the seven-headed serpent which i want to show you next so here you can see a representation of what looks like a decapitated head with seven spurts of blood or serpents coming out of it. Now this may represent bloodlines. This is what JJ has just been telling me because she's an expert on ancient symbolism. But we also find this very similar at places like Cambodia, Angkor Wat, where we also find very similar pyramids to the Mayan Toltec style. We also find it in Siberia and we also it could be a sacred number system because seven was certainly used by the Maya in their calendrics. Um, and next to it, we have below it here, we have the skull, kind of like a symbol of the skull, the decapitated head. But was he a hero or was he an enemy? And then we see other depictions all the way down here, linking up with the serpents either end. So we're just walking down the other end of the ball court now and we have more of these really stunning carvings here with these amazing priestly figures, ball players, priests and other such things. And then we have this amazing head of the serpent which we not only find here but we find all over the site. Now this is a very much, not just a Toltec thing, this goes way way back. The very early Maya were doing this, the Olmec had plume serpent symbolism, a Monument 19 at Leventa, for instance, and also at Teotihuacan, which are supposed to be before the Toltecs, before the Maya, potentially going back two or 3,000 years. And so there's so much going on at this site of Chichen Itza. It used to be called just Chitsen, which kind of means the, the water's mouth or the well of the water. So there's different versions of exactly what it means. Um, but it generally refers to water and the fact that we have the main Kukul Khan pyramid built over a cenote with three structures as part of it with serpent symbolism and even the shadow play over the equinoxes going around it suggests that this Toltec layer over Chichen Itza is actually very much influenced by the early Olmec culture. So the top length there is like the serpent, but we actually have the tail of the serpent coming down. You can see that there just in the middle left of the screen. And then it kind of curves back up again. Um, it probably rejoins uh, the length of this um, serpent like, kind of statue, really. So this is incredible. It's an incredible sight. It's, it's sort of super sized. Just in view of the Pyramid of Kukul Clan, we have these very large megalithic blocks here making up the southern end of the ball court. Look at these. These are actually pretty chunky. This is again, this is similar in design to what we find at Tula. So this may well have been part of the Toltec style, which we find all over this site. So you can see the back side of the ball court there with serpents at the top. This is absolutely gigantic. More serpents and then the pyramid of the serpent over there. So this is like just behind the ball court, just in front of the ball court really, and we have a jaguar throne here, which is interesting. The reason this is interesting, this is the same kind of thing we find inside the Pyramid of Kukuklan, which is the earlier Itza construction, who were these unknown people who were here after the Maya. So that's really intriguing. And then we have all this kind of cross-hatching symbolism and other things on these pillars. Very, very intriguing, beautiful artwork, what's left of it anyway. So this is the platform of the skulls, where this is quite dark. This is where they used to exhibit the skulls of enemies and sacrificed prisoners. Uh, they were inserted in vertical fashion, one above the other, and resulted in the creation of a lasting monument to war and sacrifice, and also with the intention of terrifying those who dare rebel against the leaders here of Chichen Itza. The skull platform kind of joins up with many other ceremonial platforms here, all the way up here 
You must remember that the reason that the Toltecs came this way is because of all the dark religious activities that were going on in Tolan or Tula, which they think it is. And they fled this way to start afresh with Quetzalcoatl, uh, who was the king at the time, the sort of late 10th century, who actually was embodied the traditions of Quetzalcoatl of the ancient traditions that go way back thousands of years, all the way to the times of the Olmec. JJ's just pointed out on the top right corner there that could be Tlaloc, Tlaloc, the kind of rain god, also the leader, the king of the Quinnametsin giants. So we even have giant imagery here all the way along this particular platform. So this is interesting. This is like a pile of columns. Now, these are interesting because these were actually used in some traditions to roll down and flatten the sack bays. Now, these are probably part of the construction that have just been piled up here. You can, oh, you can really see it here. You can actually see it, look. You can see where it goes down the sides. That is very interesting. So this is clearly, I mean, there are more here, but they're not very long. They don't go on for miles like the Koba Yakzuna sack bay. But you can clearly see this is an example. We have steps even going down here. And down here, you can kind of see the wall. Looks like it's been reconstructed. But you can see it's a raised white road, about 30 or so feet wide. This is fascinating. So we're actually on a sacred road of the Maya here at Chichen Itza. We're just approaching the end of the Sac Bay here. We're just about to see the great cenote. It's a huge, great thing. And it actually had construction, it had steps had levels going down and may have had various platforms we'll see some of the construction right here so we're reaching now the end of the sack bay heading from the main pyramid into the cenote and we're pretty much on it here it kind of goes along here finishes here but this is very interesting because i did not expect to see such a fine example of a sack bay here at chichen itza it's very high up it's got very raised sides very well constructed and we even saw what I believe are some of the rollers at the other end of the site which may have been used to actually flatten it this is one of the traditions and, so, and even on the Yakzuna Koba Sack Bay they found evidence of these along its length uh, suggesting they weren't pillars they were actually rollers so they were actually a practical um, like basalt columns here they look like limestone columns but they could be basalt uh, quarried from another area but let's go and have a look at the very end of the sack bay and into the cenote. So this is the end of the road, the end of the sacred white road of the Maya, the sack bay that heads pretty much north-south from the main pyramid right here to the huge sacred cenote. Now this is, I believe, possibly the oldest part of the site, this sack bay. These go way, way back. They link up all across the Yucatan, down into Guatemala, and they're usually associated with the pre-classic, the very early phases of Maya construction. And so to find that here, this could be why this whole site was built, why it was chosen by the Maya, and later the Itzas, and then later uh, the Toltecs, uh, because they were following these very early traditions of just being, you know, the whole name as well. Chichen, it relates as like the sacred well or the place of the well. So this is Cenote Sagrado. And, you know, the traditional Mayan sources uh, define this particular natural well as an important ceremonial center and pilgrimage destination. And this is evident because clearly we have the sack bay leading down to it from the main pyramid. Um, it's mainly used, they think, between the 5th and the 16th centuries. With rituals and other such things, they found gold, different types of metal, tin, copper, a kind of brass called tombac, obsidian, quartz, wood shell, copal, rubber textiles, and even skeletal remains, mainly of children and adult males. It's 60 meters in diameter. Uh, it stretches a slightly sort of oval shape and the water is about 22 meters deep and it goes further down apparently. So let's have a little look inside here. You can see some of the constructions here along the side of it. They kind of have megalithic elements. And now you can look over, you can just about see it down there. Look at that. But look, it's got these constructions marking the exact end of the sack bay. You've got megalithic blocks over on that side as well. So just over there in the distance, you can actually see very large stones making up 
the edge of the sack bay and the cenote where they kind of almost join together it's interesting because this piece here i'll just zoom back out what we're looking at here is potentially the end of the sack bay before it leads down into the sort of sacred ritual area and then into the actual chasm itself you can't really jump in there for a swim at this place but you probably wouldn't want to there's probably still dead bodies in there so it's incredible to think that sacrificed men and children were thrown in there not women men and children so i've been both in my life so that's worrying this one is interesting look you've got a stone here it looks like it's been placed here and the actual tree is growing through the stone it's cracked the stone open and successfully blossomed into this beautiful tree we see before us right in front of the cenote the stuff they found in this cenote really does interest me because it appears to be that not only were they offering you know standard things like obsidian jade uh, and other such objects they were actually different types of metals all combined together uh, making up a kind of brass with tin as well and this suggests an influence coming from a different area of the world possibly south america possibly the middle east so again we, we may find connections here with other cultures especially as there's bearded what appears to be eastern mediterranean looking uh people with facial hair which you don't get here and also traditions that match those in the middle east and also obviously we have the olmec connection in this you know mexico for sure so this whole area may have had influences coming in from different parts of the world so let's walk back up the sack bay, back to the main part of the site. They actually think this rampart here was actually built later, possibly by the Toltecs, almost like block the uh, sack bay itself. Got steps going down there, and then over this side as well. Although it would have continued all the way up to the main complex. So this is like the older pyramid under the ground here. Look at this. Then we have the main structure here. So here we have the incredible Temple of the Columns at Chichen Itza. It's hundreds of these spread out um, on the eastern side of the site. This is much like the design we find at Tula. And this is tradition, they say, came from Tolan, which is their original homeland, which they fled from with their great king, Quetzalcoatl. You can see here, there's much symbolism here. Now it's blocked off. We can't go up there at the moment. We have Chakmul up there, serpents, and much other symbolism. But this is almost identical to what we find at Tula, near Mexico City. So many of these pillars actually had carvings of uh relief carvings of warriors and it's up here can't see them clearly here but you actually see some with beards now this is a big sort of mystery of this site there's sculpted masks there's serpents warriors priests and other such things in the upper building we also have a pook style like we find at Ushmal and Kaba and so forth over in the west part of the Yucatan at the top there I'll just zoom in a bit you can actually see some of that styling on top there on both sides so we're seeing different styles mash up here at Chichen Itza if we look carefully at some of these pillars you can actually see these warrior casts carved on them really hard to see from this distance but some of these have beards representing either Quetzalcoatl or actual people here who were bearded potentially from another place but we're going to rush over now to the pyramid because the sun is starting to move into position where we actually see the serpent kind of undulating down the pyramid steps and meeting the serpent's head marking the spring equinox this year 2021 also up on the temple of the columns behind me we have a check mall it's one of the most famous ones you can just about see the head of it at the top there from a distance you can't go up there at the moment but it's there and this is traditionally this is a toltec symbol which then later actually became part of the mayan world as well and so we're finding all this mashup all this sort of blending of cultures here which i think goes back to a much earlier epoch which is represented by the sac bay and earlier still the cenote and 
offerings and rituals were being carried out there probably for hundreds of years before this started being built on by the early Maya followed by the Itza and the Toltecs. The name given to this is the castle or Castillo but really it's a multiple pyramid structure. There's a substructure, there's the main pyramid and there's even an earlier structure and even a cenote right underneath it. On each side is a procession of jaguars walking in opposite directions with war shields on the upper part. There is a strip of serrated bars that leave inverted triangles simulating interwined serpents. Inside the vestibule Inside the vestibule is a chak mool with bone inlays representing eyes, teeth and nails. And in the sanctuary there's a jaguar throne painted red. The spots on the skin are represented by jade discs. The fangs are carved out of shell and the eyes are two large round jade stones. So the earlier structure here is a big debate about who really built it. Whether it was the Maya, the Itza or an even earlier culture and I believe it may have been very early Maya who were these megalithic people who were building these sack bays, they were building sites like Izamal, Ake, Tihu in Merida, all the way over to El Naranjal uh, in Quintana Roo and beyond and so there's a lot going on here, much more than meets the eye and I'm delighted to have a chance to witness the equinox here for the first time in my life. Uh, on the spring equinox 2021 so i hope you're enjoying what footage we can get here and we'll put some other photos other people have taken so you can get a beautiful view of this stunning uh, serpent phenomena that takes place here because it isn't just here we have this shadow play we know that as i mentioned already stonehenge peru but also egypt actually along the equinox we actually find at a certain specific time of day just for a few seconds the one side of the pyramid is like you can see the way it's actually two-sided it's actually concave slightly and that emerges just for a short while then disappears again this is much like this or this is much longer lasting so even at pyramids in egypt we have this shadow effect occurring uh, as well as here in mexico so it's a worldwide phenomenon working with the astronomy the sun even the moon the stars and everything else and the way the shadows and the buildings work together to create this stunning phenomenon that we're seeing here right now today right behind me right now is the final stages of the serpent shadow effect here at Chichen Itza so this is remarkable so it's a real pleasure to be here to witness this there's hundreds of people here maybe thousands it's been a very busy day it's very hectic here compared to other sites but you must check this out one year if you get a chance to visit here on either you know equinox in March or in September and it's a real treat to actually be somewhere where this sort of sacred architecture and the movement of the sun is causing this remarkable effect. So we hope you've enjoyed our visit here to Chichen Itza today to celebrate the spring equinox 2021. And we've seen quite a few interesting features here, including the ball court, some interesting symbolism, some megalithic aspects, of course, what we're seeing happening behind us. And we look forward to exploring more and uh, so keep watching our videos please like subscribe hit the bell icon become a patron if you can we really appreciate it and we'll keep exploring we'll keep sharing these videos with you so thanks for watching megalithomaniacs and i'll see you next time